Ashley Thomas as Beth, Christina Ray as Liz, Ange Madeline Johnson as Sister Betty, Diego Gomez as Tommy Andrews, Michael Hampton as Carl Plum, Rachel Agee as Elizabeth, Susan Mackey Miller as Michelle, and Don Jeremy Holland, and I'll be reading stage directions. Scene one, the park. Beth is seated on a bench, writing in a journal. A large cello case leans against the bench. She looks to her right, watching for someone. Coming up behind her is Liz. She stands, watching Beth, who doesn't notice her. Entering from the right is Tommy, carrying a gin bag. As he crosses in front of the bench, Beth gives him a shy, self-conscious smile. He gives her a grin, then exits. Beth sighs. You need to stop being so scared. I forgot how cute he was. Beth jumps, startled. Liz sits down next to Beth and openly stares at her. Hello? Hi, Beth. Do I know you? Look close. I... I don't... Look closer. Are you a friend of my mom's? I've been figuring out how I'm going to try to say this, and I decided I'm just going to tell you. Tell me what? I'm you. What? From the future. That's not a thing. And yet here I am. <laughs> uh, this is weird. No, I, I need to go home. She starts to rise. Liz grabs her wrist. <clears throat> I found you because you come here all the time after school, dragging your cello. For the quiet, and the shade, and you can do a little writing. Plus, after soccer practice, Tommy Andrews walks by so he can go to the convenience store to go get a Gatorade. Then, 15 minutes later, he walks back. You're too shy to talk to him, but usually he smiles at you, and that makes your day. How do you know that? Because I'm you. I sat here, I wrote, I looked at Tommy Andrews a lot. I used to pretend me and Tommy were- Stop! I'm you. This is nuts. <laughs> she pulls away from Liz, but doesn't leave. Instead, she stares at Liz. You see it now, don't you? I don't know. I guess I could try to prove it to you by remembering all the Tommy Andrews fantasies. Take off your right shoe. What? I want to see your foot. Liz pulls off her shoe and sock if she's wearing one. Show me the bottom. If you're me, you'll have a scar and a birthmark. Liz lifts her foot to show Beth the bottom. <laughs> Beth stares. Scar, birthmark. <laughs> this is impossible. Call me Liz. When did I become a Liz? Seriously, I was Beth, then Eliza, then Liz Bet, then Lizzie with a Y, <laughs> then Lizzie with an IE, then Liz. I look terrible. Yeah, it's not working out. <laughs> we need to make better choices. Me? Yeah, it's too late for me. That's why I'm here, so we can start over. You might want to start taking some notes. I I'm not taking any notes. First of all, Seth Gilbert. Oh, wait, is this about boys? My life is not about boys. Good. Embrace that. Now pay attention. <laughs> Seth Gilbert. Write his name on your brain. If you hear it, you run. It won't be for a while, but it's so, so, so important. Seth Gilbert, run. Say it. Seth Gilbert, run. Good. <laughs> or you could just kick him in the crotch if that opportunity presents itself. <laughs> just saying. Seth Gilbert, kick him in the crotch. <laughs> I'm leaving. No. I need to tell you about all the other guys you need to avoid. Liz pulls a folded list from her pocket. She unfolds it. It's long. Really long. You must be joking. This is in the order of them when it happened. As close as I can remember. Just <laughs> say no to all of them. Mike Squires. Mike Squires? He doesn't even know I exist. Uh, he will. Soon. But ignore him. Johnny Robb, Eddie Franco, Todd Kramer, Miles Henderson, Jordan Melman, Ricky Deeds. I'm going to date all of these guys? No. You are going to avoid all these guys. But these are guys that we kissed? Some more than that. 
Ew. <laughs> Good, yes, that's the right attitude. <laughs> Stop, time out. What? I've still never been kissed. That's right, we're a little slow. But then we blossomed and that's coming soon. Boys will be all over you. They will? Don't get excited. It will seem amazing, but it's really not. Pay attention. Norman Hertzfeld, Harry Johnstone, some guy named Ramon with a Lamborghini. You dated a guy whose last name you didn't even know? He had a Lamborghini. <laughs> Seriously? Can I continue? Well, why can't I make my own bad choices? Because they affect my life. That sounds a little selfish. What about my needs? I'm you. <laughs> Can't you tell me other things about the future, bigger things about the world? That's not allowed. Basically, I can just tell you about boys. <laughs> that is insane. That's the rules. I'm never going to remember all these names. Just take the whole list. Beth takes it, looks at it. Did we really kiss all of these boys? We did. That's a lot of frogs. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> No prints? No. What about Tommy Andrews? <laughs> Way out of our league. What happens to him? No idea. Do we become a famous soccer star? Is that a thing? <laughs> so who should I go out with? That's why I'm here. Ready? Carl Flunt. Carl Flunt? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. He's going to be really rich. I don't care about that. Really? Really rich. There is nothing interesting about Carl Flunt. I can never see myself loving Carl Flunt. Love. Forget about love. Love is a trap. Love doesn't exist. Go for the catch. Carl, this is why I came back. You need to snap up Carl Flunt. Carl Flunt is weird. And not weird in like a smart nerd way. I like smart nerds. <clears throat> Carl Flunt is weird, weird. Look. If you avoid all the boys on that list, maybe it'll make me an emotionally healthy person who is ready for love when it comes along. But it would be so much easier if you just married Carl Flint. Not now, like in five or six years, before he meets Marianne Flugel. I'm not marrying Carl Flint. Tell me about the other stuff. Do you have a job? I work for Kynotech in HR. What does that mean? I deal with employee stuff. Really? That makes you happy? No. That's why I came here in one of those time machines secretly. Didn't, didn't I go to college? You did. Waste of time. And I didn't become a cellist? Seriously? Yes. No. I have been playing the cello for eight years. I'm cello girl. You hate the cello. I don't hate the cello. You just don't want to tell mom you want to quit because you know she'll get that look on her face. Well, she got that look when I stopped playing cello. In about six months, maybe a year. You should do it now, though. Save us some time. Well, I, I figured that was my fallback career. I could play in an orchestra or something. Ew, no. <laughs> Moving on from the cello was the best thing we ever did. What am I supposed to do? Marry Carl! No! For a career. For a life. To be happy. Isn't that important? <laughs> I guess. Fine. What do you want to do? What are you passionate about? You don't remember? all a blur. <laughs> How can it be a blur? You're only, what, 40? Hey, I'm 27. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look that old that fast? Don't blame me. Blame you. Do you smoke? Drink? Yeah. Well, stop doing both of those things. You stop doing it. I'm not smoking or drinking. <laughs> oh, you will. <laughs> How did I become you? I don't want to be you. Good. Good. Who do you want to be? And don't say someone who plays the cello. I don't know. You need to figure it out. I've always liked writing. It's not a career. We'll be poor. <laughs> money. Sure, you say that now. Mom and Dad are paying the rent. That won't last long. Do you like ramen? Not really. Being poor means eating ramen. Cheap instant ramen that you make in a microwave, if you even have a microwave. You want to write? Mary Carl Flint. Then we can sit at home all day and write, and we'll have a cook. They can cook us whatever we want. I'm not marrying Carl Flint. Don't make me punch you. <laughs> when I woke up this morning, all I cared about was passing a quiz in history and maybe getting my daily smile from Tommy Andrews. 
And now suddenly I have to make major choices about my life and cello and we're never going to find love. You're making me sad. I should have listened to Grandma. She wanted us to become a nun. No, don't do that. <laughs> Forget it. It's done. I'm becoming a nun. Sister Betty enters, zen and peaceful. She sits on the other side of that. Whoa. Hi, my name is Sister Betty. You want to see my foot? Sister Betty shows up. <laughs> Sister Betty shows up the bottom of her right foot. That's us. This is impossible. <laughs> I'm from the future timeline in which to become a nun. This is a real turning point in our life. Choices will be made today that decide which future is real, which collapses. Are you happy being a nun? It's not about happy, but I'm content. Do you play the cello? <coughs> oh, no. We hated the cello. <laughs> but it's a good life. We have butterflies in the garden. But there's a little squirrel that comes out, and I feed it nuts. <laughs> OK, she's high. <laughs> high on life and God and some Pepsi I drank in the time machine <laughs> and buzzed on sugar <laughs> this her life? she seems pretty mellow it's a quiet life of devotion and wonder wait how did you get back here this to me works for some time machine company and stole a ride or something Vinny DePasta let me into the room. He's on the list. <laughs> but you're a nun. Well, the convent has a time machine. We use it for fighting Satan. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. Do you use nunchucks? <laughs> nunchucks. <laughs> oh, no, I don't fight Satan. That's Sister Bertha. She was an MMA fighter before she came to God. <laughs> So why are you here? Oh, you left me a note. You wrote it on the back of the list of boys we never fooled around with. Sister Betty pulls out a battered version of Lizard's list, unfolds it. Dear future me who is a nun, someday come back to the day the other future me showed up, show me your foot, and tell me how the nun thing worked out. It worked out pretty well. <laughs> Beth gives her a long look. There must be other choices. Carl Flunt. No, I am not going to marry Carl Flunt. I'm going to be a writer. Where's the me from that future? I want to be a writer. Come out and talk to me. They look around. Nothing. Hello, where are you? Maybe, writer, you get hit by a truck. No. Carl Flunt will protect you from trucks. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Enough with Carl Flunt. Maybe writer me is so happy in the future that they didn't want to come back. You think that they didn't want to come back and tell you? Or maybe they don't have a time machine. Mm, that's plausible. Sometimes ducks land in the lily pond behind the convent. <laughs> I've decided I'm not going to be a nun, and I'm not going to marry Carl Flunt. Mistake! I'm going to be a writer, even if it means I get hit by a truck. So, if it makes you feel better, I'm not going to date any of these guys. Maybe you want to rethink that. You got a little lonely turning down everyone. Still never been kissed. Well, that's no good. Uh, pick, pick three guys from this list. Nice guys with soft lips. I'm telling you, it's Carl. Let it go. <laughs> Fine. Johnny, Jordan, and Ricky. Maybe I'll say hi to Tommy Andrews next time he walks by. He is way out of our league. Did you ever try? No. Exactly. Maybe if I talk to him, it'll be amazing. <clears throat> It'll change everything. Where's the me married to Tommy? Come out! They look around. Oh, come on. Carl? What? <clears throat> no. I'm going to wait here for Tommy Andrews, and we're going to check. He'll be back any second, so I need you to leave. I'm not going to be either of you. Sorry. I guess you both just vanish or something. <laughs> Probably. But I'll try to make it all work. And, uh, it's been real. They Thanks. look at each other awkwardly. Yes. You're still here. <laughs> I guess changing your future takes a while. I'm sure they'll vanish any second. They wait. Any second? Nothing. I guess we get to hang out. Not here. <laughs> what do you want to do? Let's find Carl Flint. No! He's your destiny. I'm telling you, embrace it. I'm not going out with Carl Flint. We'll see. Come on, nun. <laughs>
Liz and Sister Betty head off stage. Beth watches them leave. She sits, looks right, checks her watch, jumps up, then paces nervously. Hi, I'm Beth. How are you? Oh, that's awful. I shouldn't talk to him. Tommy Andrews doesn't care about me. Unless he does. No, he doesn't. But maybe he's my future. But they didn't even remember him. What does that mean? I'm not going to be a cellist? Maybe that's a good thing. I can be a writer, right? Maybe? I need to stop thinking so much. Oh, crap, there he is. Tommy wanders in with a duffel bag in one hand, Gatorade in the other. He smiles at Beth, who freezes as Tommy walks right past her. <sighs> no, I'm doing this. She runs ahead of him and stands in Tommy's way. Hi. <laughs> I need to talk to you. Okay. Do you know who I am? Tommy looks her up and down, tilts his head. No. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Do you go to my school? I'm cello girl. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I play the cello. Oh. Unless I'm writer girl. Oh, okay. He starts to move on. Uh, you know me. We both had Mr. Harmon for third grade and um, Mrs. Sosa for fifth grade. In middle school, we had eighth grade English together and then ninth grade Spanish. Miss Lopez, remember? I sat two desks to your left near the window. <laughs> That's very specific. <laughs> one time during a quiz, your pen ran out of ink and I gave you one of mine. Did I give it back? You did. <laughs> <laughs> and your name is? Beth. Wait, did you set pigtails? Never. Sorry, I don't remember you. You smile at me. Oh, what? <laughs> Every day, I sit right here on this bench reading, and you walk past, and you smile at me. I smile at everyone. <laughs> oh. Someone once told me I had a great smile. You too. <laughs> I really need to go home. Take care, um, Beth. He moves past her. Beth almost lets him go, then sighs and chases after him again. Wait, I really do need to talk to you. Can you give me five minutes? It, it could be the most important five minutes of our lives. I'm intrigued. <laughs> I can't tell you what happened today because you'll think I'm crazy. I think I'm crazy. But let's just say that I started thinking about the future and all the possible futures looming in front of us and all the various options and choices that we have that'll define our whole lives. Everything we do and everything we don't do. And every day I sit here and I watch you walk past and smile at me and it makes me happy. But if I never talk to you about that, if I never talk to you about anything, then of all the infinite futures we have, none of them will intersect because they won't. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. I mean, I'm rambling. I know I'm rambling, and you're probably thinking, five minutes? I can't believe I promised this girl five minutes. I need to get out of here now. But I'm not a rambler. I'm not. It's just because I'm nervous. I'm talking to you. You don't need to be afraid of me. Wait, I need to get through this. Normally, I'm shy, and I don't talk that much, but maybe I should. So I am. And wow, this is all coming across nutty, but maybe that's good, because you'll never forget this, ever, will you? I mean, I've definitely made an impression. <laughs> You definitely have. <laughs> but it's not the impression I wanted to make. It's not. I mean, maybe this is me, this nervous, rambling person. But maybe I'm a lot more than that. I never really thought about that until today, but now it's like it all just dropped on me, this crazy weight. What am I going to do with my life? Apparently, I'm not really cello girl. Am I writer girl? I need to breathe. Beth sits on the bench, tries to breathe. I mean, I could get some boring job somewhere. I've already forgotten what job she said she had. Who? Or I could be a nun, but wow, if there was ever any part of me that wanted to be a nun, I think that choice is a no now. I mean, I guess she's nice, but that was me. can't believe that was me. Nun? I know, right? But then, <laughs> who am I? What is my passion? I thought it was cello, but let's be honest, she's right. I was just making my mother happy. Maybe I'm passionate about writing. But do people 
really pursue their passions? I have no idea what my parents are passionate about. I don't seem passionate about anything. But what about you? Do you think about the future? What are you passionate about? <laughs> That's silly. I know. You love soccer. Do you think you'll play professionally? I'm going to be a doctor. What? That's what I want to do. I, I want to help people. Wow. I mean, I like soccer, and if I can get a soccer scholarship to a good college, that would be awesome. Because the better the undergraduate degree, the better the medical school, but, you know, whatever. Sure. I, I mean, I work weekends at the hospital as a candy striper, and, and everything I see there, everything I experience, it just makes me want to do it more. But I, I'd like to go to do the whole Doctors Without Borders uh, and helping out in the poor areas. I'm hoping to graduate from high school early. Just gotta get it all started faster. I'm gonna take summer classes. You really are out of my league. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Sorry, I don't usually ramble either. Uh, it's just that people usually aren't that interested. You seem interested. I am. So you want to be a writer? I guess. Maybe. You should have some idea. Uh, you're going to be going to college soon. I just sort of thought I'd figure it out. Yeah, it's hard to make a living as a writer. You're going to wind up with some crappy real job and wishing you'd gone to college for a career. You should go to law school. <laughs> what? Sure, law degree gives you lots of flexibility. I really don't want to be a lawyer. Sometimes you need to be realistic. Just picture yourself as a lawyer. Death looks around. <laughs> Who are you looking for? Never mind. Nothing. This day is giving me a headache. Silence. Long enough to be awkward. Well, your five minutes are up. I really need to get home. Anything else? Beth hesitates, then chickens out. I guess that's it. See you around. He heads off. Beth takes a step after him, and then lets him go. She sits on the bench, leans her head back, closes her eyes, and groans. Why didn't I just kiss him? Blackout. Scene two. The street near a cafe. Liz and Sister Betty come in on the side of the stage. Liz stops. Feel that? What? Liz licks her lips. <laughs> I think Beth was thinking about kissing boys. I don't even know what that feels like. Wait, I'm getting something. Sister Betty licks her lips. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. What does it feel like? I can't believe you're me. <laughs> Lights up on Carl Blunt who sits at a small cafe table, reading a book. There he is, Carl Blunt. He doesn't look weird. You don't remember him at all? Not really. They observe him. He's not bad looking. Ew, you're supposed to be me. We're supposed to have the same taste. <laughs> well, I have been in a convent. There aren't any men there. Ah, uh, say no more. Except Juan Carlo. He comes once a month to trim the hedges. Sometimes when it's hot, he takes off his shirt. <laughs> well, look at you. Did you ever, you know, behind the hedges? <laughs> with Juan Carlo? Why is with Juan Carlo? Absolutely not! That would be a sin! Depends if you're doing it right. <laughs> he would never. He's married. Oh, sister, that's not a deal breaker. He has five children. Okay, maybe you shouldn't. Have him. <laughs> Eleven grandchildren. Wait, what? Fourteen <laughs> great grandchildren. <laughs> How old is Juan Carlo? <laughs> I believe he's 87. 87? <laughs> yes. Why are you looking at him with a shirt off? I'm in a convent. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder Carl Flunt looks good to you. You may not be a very good judge of men anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe I could clean them up. Some nice clothes. A better haircut. I can see that. Or get him to grow it out so she can run her fingers through it. That's a thing, right? <laughs> when was the last time you touched a man? Never? You better let me take the lead here. Liz and Sister Betty moved toward Carl, who still hasn't registered their presence at all. How does he get rich? Some computer tech company thing? I don't know, but he's gonna be loaded. <laughs> Liz abruptly sits next to him. Sister Betty lurks in the background. Hey, Carl. I'm not sure how long we're going to be around, so I'm going to cut to the chase. There's this girl named Beth Morgan. I think you two would really hit it off. Beth Morgan? Yes. I don't know her. You do. She's in your school. <laughs> what does she look like? Sort of like me, but about 10 years younger. So she's like 30? I'm not 40 <laughs> years old. <laughs> Is she a teacher? You want me to go out with a teacher? She's not a teacher. She's a girl your age. I don't know her. I think you'd be really good together. Does she like microwave ovens? What? <laughs> I'm really getting into microwave ovens. Taking them apart and putting them back together again, trying to make them cook even faster. Wouldn't that be amazing? To be able to put something in there, press a button, then it gets instantly hot in like two seconds? No waiting. You can't wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Time is money. It's going to be huge. I don't think instant microwave ovens is how you make your fortune. Don't tell anyone. It's top secret. Trust me when I tell you, it's not always about speed, especially with the ladies. Carl sees Sister Betty and reacts in fear. <sighs> what? There's a nun watching us. <laughs> She's with me. Nuns terrify me. Seriously? Don't let her hurt me. <laughs> I mean you no harm. Carl hides behind Liz. It's okay. Your eyes are kind. I can see that you're a gentle soul. Can I touch you? Certainly. Uh, no, 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 no touching. Well, it's good that he wants to touch me, given the situation. <laughs> what situation? He is not for you, at least not for none of you. What's going on? When was the last time you went to church? It's been a while. We are not doing this right now. A little spirituality might help him be a better man for us. I don't want him to be a priest. I just want him to shower more often. I shower? Listen, I need you to ask out Beth Morgan. You need to take her someplace nice. You need to woo her. Here's 50 bucks. Liz fishes some cash out of her pocket and slips it to Carl. Are you bribing him to take her out? I'm just subsidizing the date. <laughs> There's more where that came from, if you behave yourself. <laughs> more where that came from? We could vanish any second. Shh! Uh, what do you mean, behave myself? Don't be expecting her to put up. Not yet. She's <laughs> off men for a while. Beth is not the type that is going to put out. Oh, trust me. We put out way too much. <laughs> I've never put out in my life. That's because you're virgin future. She's not picking virgin future. She still might. <sighs> But she's not putting out with you. Get that out of your head right now. Putting out on the first date or the second date or the third date just cause problems. Maybe you should be a gentleman. She might respect that. Did you respect that? You might have a point. Maybe you should wait until you're married. Girls scare me. Oh, great. <laughs> hey, I date. Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> You might want to start taking notes. I'm not taking notes. How come no one ever wants to take notes? Who are you people? We're interested parties. Shh. Here's the deal. Beth likes Italian food. Oh, yeah. Take her out to dinner, someplace with a nice lasagna, maybe the place near the freeway. What was that called? I don't think I ever went there. We'll go later if we're still around. It's a date. It's not a date. Don't make this weird. <laughs> now, this is what you need to do. Compliment Beth. Tell her she has nice eyes. What color are her eyes? Just like mine. Uh, sort of muddy? <laughs> Try to be more poetic. 
Tell her her eyes are like mysterious pools that you could fall into. That's not too bad. Mysterious pools. You're supposed to be writing this down. I dream of Juan Carlos saying that to me. You need to stop. <laughs> Pay attention to that. See what she puts on special for you if she's wearing perfume. Oh, I remember perfume. Tell her she smells nice. If she's wearing her Doc Martens, tell her you love her shoes. Tell her you love her shoes anyway. Let her talk. Let her tell you about her life. Show an interest in what she's saying. Bring up her grandparents. Hopefully she'll tell you the story about Papa Dan, the one about the bear. She loves that story. She wants to be a writer. Encourage that. Tell her that when you get married, you let her write as much as she wants. Married? Yes, pay attention. You've never really dated at all? Girls don't see me like that. It's hoping that one day when I'm rich and successful. That's actually a pretty good strategy. Yeah? But we don't have time for that right now. You need to seal the deal with Beth immediately. Set the groundwork for your whole future now, while you're still around to advise you. I see great things for you, Carl Quant. You're going to come up with something that makes you rich. Fast microwaves. No. <laughs> Actually, don't listen to me. I don't want to change your inventing. You do the microwave thing, see, what it see where it leads you, because somewhere down the line, you're going to do something cool. Don't lose that. But don't babble too much. You don't want to bore that. Don't I want a wife that who won't be bored by what I do? She's cute. She can cook a little bit. I don't care about cute. I don't care about cooking. I want a wife who gets me, who takes an interest in what I do. Yes. You think that's bad? Sure, I'm interested. Why wouldn't she be? You're easy. You haven't talked to a man in 20 years. I think Beth will surprise you. Maybe you've lost that part of you, but Beth hasn't, not yet. Take her out to dinner. Be yourself. No. Yes, completely yourself. Let her see it all. Because that's the only relationship, that's the only marriage that's ever going to work. This is not the plan. This should be the plan. Isn't this what you want for Beth? Happiness? Good choices? I was thinking more like a BMW, a house on the beach. Aim higher. Take Beth out to dinner. Be yourself. Warts and all. I don't have warts. <laughs> it's an expression. Be you. Hypothetical question, Carl. Beth is walking down the middle of the road. Why would she be walking in the middle of the road? I don't know. Maybe she's <laughs> running over to see you. Maybe she's excited you're there. Let's hang. But a truck is coming. Oh, no. I see what you're doing with this. Would you save her from that truck? Would you lunge into the road and push her to safety, even if it meant you might be risking your own life? Liz and Sister Betty lean forward, waiting for his answer. Uh, I'd like to think so. Ha! I told you he would. That's something to build a relationship on. <laughs> is it? There are worse things. This is what I want you to do. Clean yourself up. Take a shower, put a little cologne on, some aftershave, not too much. Um, then meet Beth at the beach. Five o'clock, sharp. I don't know. Trust me. Worst comes to worst, you spend time talking to a girl. The next time will be easier. I guess that makes sense. But I have a good feeling about this girl. Where are you meeting her? The beach. Five o'clock. Let's go. We need to tell Beth before we disappear. Liz heads off. Sister Betty heads after her, then stops, goes back to Carl. Don't be afraid. She reaches out and touches Carl's face with the back of her hand. Wow. Wow. <laughs> no! Sister Betty <laughs> smiles at Carl, then runs over. Carl just watches her go. Then he sniffs his armpit, <laughs> makes a face, and heads in the other direction. Blackout. Scene three, the park. Beth is still seated on the bench. Elizabeth comes in, eyes her, then sits next to Beth, startling her. <gasps> oh, sorry. I'm a little jumpy. It feels like every woman I see is some version of... Well, never mind. Uh, you can sit there. Thanks, Beth. Beth, <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're another me, aren't you? 
I'm, I'm Elizabeth. Did you see my foot? I believe you. <laughs> you were here already? Oh, rats! Oh, I was trying to beat them, but my time portal opened up on the other side of town behind the boathouse. Should have worn better shoes. Why is everyone coming now? Oh, that's how uh, time travel works. There are only a few days that the portals can open. I mean, I could have come back when we were six, but that might have really messed us up. <laughs> so what are you here to ask me to change? Oh, I don't want you to change anything. I'm here to tell you not to let these women get you into a tailspin. I remember when they visited, and it threw me. But I second-guessed myself for years, but I got through it. We're going to be okay. Just don't do anything crazy. Like, talk to Carl Flint. You never talked to Carl Flint? Nope. Don't even want to know where that would have gone. No, we're good, though. Huh. In fact, don't listen to Liz's advice, advice at all. I didn't. Well, I mean, I tried not to be so boy crazy, but otherwise, just keep being you. <laughs> Who am I? You're you! You're me! Just keep being that. That's all you need to know. Do you play the cello? No, oh, waste of time. <laughs> did you go to college? We did. Was that fun? It was okay. <laughs> Just okay? Just okay. <laughs> but you're happy, right? We are happy. We're okay. <laughs> I don't want to be just okay. But sometimes okay is amazing. Because okay is so much better than awful. Tell me you're a writer. I write. Good. <laughs> you're not going to make a living at it or anything, but one novel. Wow. Self-published. <laughs> but I wrote it. And yes, there is a box of books getting dusty in the garage, but it's my book that you I have, wrote. You have a garage? Yes. And a house? A beautiful house. Are you married? Yes. Is he amazing? He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what does that even mean? He's okay. How can okay be enough? He's much better than the other two. <laughs> We've been married three times? Yes. <laughs> children? No. Why not? Do you want children? I think so. Even with the right guy? Yes. But we haven't found him yet. You've been married three times. Exactly. <laughs> How could you marry them if you didn't think they were worth having children with? You, you never really know someone until you marry them. People change after they get married. Well, tell me their names so I don't marry them. No, I don't want you to change anything. How could you not want me to change anything? But, uh, because there were happy times. How many? Uh, tell me, be honest, since you were my age, how many incredible, drop-dead, super, wonderfully happy moments have you had? Elizabeth considers. Counts on her fingers. You can count them on your fingers? Four. That's not enough. That's a lot. <laughs> Four? And how old are you? Forty-five. You look much better than the other me. See? Good choices. <laughs> how are you 45 years old and you've only had four wonderfully happy moments since you were my age? That's better than zero. I know people with zero. I want more than four. Four is plenty. No. No. How can you be happy with just four? How can you be happy with so many unhappy marriages? The current one is okay. <laughs> happy with okay. You've learned how to settle. Is that really why you came all the way back here to tell me to settle? What are you afraid of? Well, it could be worse. It could be better. Some people just aren't destined for those kinds of lives. I don't believe that. We make our own destiny. And what have you been doing about that? I'm still a teenager. Okay, most people, most really successful people, knew what they wanted to be by the time they were 10, so by the time they were 4. I don't need to be really successful. I mean, yes, it's disappointing if I'm 45 and my only book is mostly in a box in the garage, but it's a book, right? It is. And if I can write one book, I can write 10. Okay, it's not that easy, though. Why not? Why didn't you write 10? Life? Exactly. That's why I want to change my life. Again, not that easy. I don't need it to be easy. Don't you? Don't psychoanalyze me. You're me! What? I, okay, I remember. I remember being you. Not wanting anything, not caring. Just sort of skidding toward the easy choices, and it works out. Yeah, we didn't go to the best college, and yeah, I'm not happy at my job, but I mean, I'm, I'm not miserable. I've never been miserable. Even the divorces weren't miserable both times. It was just us realizing that we just didn't want to be together. So we split up, signed the papers. Easy, painless. There is nothing wrong with painless. How did I get to be you? Okay, maybe coming back here was a mistake. You think? <laughs> but maybe it wasn't. Right? It's fine if you want to study harder, get into a better school, write more of that safe. But no wild changes. No Carl Flint. 
would be a nightmare. How do you know? Okay. Oh, can you really imagine being married to Carl Flint? <laughs> Having kids with Carl Flint? <laughs> no. Of course no! Trust me, look at this. Okay, look at it this way. You're gonna live our life. And yes, on a scale of one to 10, it might hover around a five. A lot. No big ups or downs, few tens, but most importantly, not many ones, not many zeros. Don't you wanna warn me about the zeros? Every life has zeros. You cannot avoid them. Just just live your life, live my life. You, you don't wanna be Liz. Look, look, look at Liz. You look at Liz and you just know that for her, every day is like a two, like maybe a three out of 10. A life of constant fives is so much better than that. You really think I should just play it safe? I, I mean, <laughs> when I think about Tommy Andrews, every day I thought it would be the day that I talked to him, but it never was. But that was safe, that was easy, because just seeing his smile on your scale of happiness was a six, maybe a seven. But that wasn't enough. I know that now. I don't want sevens. I want tens. I'm going to talk to him again. Mistake. Why? Was he one of your three husbands? No! Did you ever talk to him again after today? It would have been pointless. It would have been a zero moment. I don't care. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to write. Fine! Write! If I go back and there are ten times as many boxes of books in that garage, <laughs> awesome! But we don't need to do more than that. We don't. I do. Liz and Sister Betty come in. Okay, what is this? Okay, don't listen to her. I don't even want to know what version of us you are. She's been divorced twice. <gasps> oh, okay, yeah, we can avoid that. She doesn't want me to avoid that. What? What's wrong with you? No, I'm not talking to you. You are not real. You did your job. She rejected your future, your empty life of twos and threes. My what? You and your creepy nun life. I'm very happy in my creepy nun life, thank you. This is exhibit A. This is exhibit B. Look at me. This is the life you want. Is this the life that you want? No. Ha! You are making a mistake. She's meeting Carl Flan at five. I am? At the beach. He seems like a nice boy. Don't listen to the nun! I'm not going to listen to any of you! Beth! You keep telling me what I shouldn't do. What should I do, huh? Marry Carl Flan! Forget <laughs> Carl Flan just for a second. I'm talking about happiness in general. Deep, personal happiness. What makes you happy? What makes us happy? I don't know. See? You don't know either. You don't. And that's a problem. Gardens make me happy. Oh, hush. <laughs> you hush. At least that's something. At least she's happy with the choices she made. Even if I don't want her life. And I'm sorry, I don't. It's okay. But as happy as she is when she talks about gardens, I want to be that happy about everything in my life. So I reject your settling. And I really wish you knew more. I really wish you had the answers. I just want you to start wanting more. I can do that. And avoid the boys on the list. Most of the boys. And you need to meet Carl Flint on the beach. There's no way me and Carl Flint are really going to be a thing. Maybe the beach will help. The sun could give him some color. Wind blowing through his hair. She's not going to marry Carl Flint! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll meet with Carl Flint. You Plunt. will not. I forbid it. You forbid it. I didn't. I can come back here for this. Elizabeth moves toward Beth. Liz blocks her. Oh, oh, I don't. You think you can stop me? You're old. So are you. I'm 27. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> they slap by four. Okay. Okay. This is really weird. Elizabeth knocks Liz down. Oh! Yeah. Sits on her. Not bad for an old lady, huh? Sister Betty comes up behind her and squeezes Elizabeth's neck hard. Elizabeth collapses. <laughs> Liz crawls out from under her. What was that? Nerve pinched. Sister Bertha taught me. She'll be fine. <laughs> we need to get rid of her. Put her through the portal. I wonder if it's around here. Uh, she said it was behind the boathouse. That's not close. We can carry her. What if she wakes up? I'll just keep nerve pinching her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beth, go to the beach and see Carl. Give him a chance. We'll meet you here at 6 o'clock. If we're still here. Maybe. Don't you want to expand your possible futures? I'm not sure I need more futures. Why are you even still here? I don't know. I'm finished business. I think we're here because all possibilities exist. Until they don't. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to go home and drop off my cello, and then I'm going to go talk to Tommy. 
Okay. You're not going to talk me out of it? As long as you promise to go to the beach and talk to Carl. His breath smelled nice. He has a time shell. Fine. I'll think about it. Good girl. Grab Beth, Carl's... Beth, Beth grabs her cello and heads off. Grab Carl's butt. I'm not <laughs> going to do that. Just go. Beth heads off. Liz and Sister Betty grab Elizabeth's arms and legs. Start carrying slash dragging her off. You've never grabbed a butt either. Not a single one. Oh, we're going to have to address that. And they're gone. Blackout. <clears throat> Scene four. Beth stands in Tommy's yard. She looks at his window. <laughs> picks up a small rock and throws it up. The sound of the window opening. The window and Tommy are at the same. It's me. Who are you? It's Beth from the park earlier. Cello girl? Yes. Well, nice. actually, I guess not. But good enough for now. Can you come down? I'm doing homework. Ten minutes. That seems like a lot. <laughs> Please? Fine. The sound of the window closing. Beth paces in a circle, tense. Tommy comes out. Hey. Hey. What's up? I guess... I just wanted to put myself out there. I just wanted, for once in my life, to go up to a guy I like and say, Hi, I'm Beth. How are you doing today? And it didn't feel like the whore in the park was really enough. Not really. So, hi, I'm Beth. How are you doing today? You like me? I do. Why? <laughs> You're nice. You've always been nice, even if we've never had a conversation. But I, I watch you with other people, and I can definitely see you as a doctor. And, you know, you're cute. But I can see this isn't working. Finding out I like you isn't really making me happy at all because you have a plan and probably a girlfriend. There are girls. Of course there are. Uh, you? Boyfriend? <laughs> no. Why'd you say <laughs> Guys aren't falling all over themselves to ask me out. I don't know why not. <laughs> You're blossoming. I've been told. Apparently it's a problem. Oh, I don't think so. Half of me wants to run away right now. And the other half? Wants to kiss you. Really? It's been on my wish list. Wow. I wanted my first kiss to be with the right guy. First kiss? <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that. No, it's, it's interesting. I guess this is the new me. The last try me. The blossoming you. I'm not supposed to be blossoming you. Or kissing. Says who? People. Feels like sometimes you should <laughs> just listen only to yourself. Maybe you're right. So, what do you say? Will you kiss me? What's in it for me? <laughs> kissing. <laughs> it's not like I haven't kissed girls before. I've kissed too many girls. <laughs> you need to make it work. While you need to give me something, I'll tell you what, I'll let you kiss me if I can grab your breast while we kiss. What? No, I'm asking permission, like a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a request a gentleman makes. Then pay me five dollars. Five dollars? <laughs> <laughs> if you kiss, that's cheap. No, okay, then I think your ten minutes are up. Uh, I still have six minutes. I'm a good kisser. <clears throat> Fine. She digs in her purse. I'm beginning to think you aren't out of my league at all. <laughs> you should have confidence. Confidence is sexy. I don't want to be sexy. Don't you? Beth finds a five dollar bill. Looks at it. You better be amazing. She hands him the money. He tucks it away. She moves toward them. And they kiss. And kiss. Beth finally pulls away. Tommy seems a little stunned. <laughs> wow. Beth does it. Oh. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> I was expecting fireworks. You didn't get fireworks? No. I got fireworks. You're lying. I haven't been I haven't gotten fireworks in a long time. You're a great kisser. I don't even know what I'm doing. You're a natural. I didn't like it. 
How can you not like it? I don't know. I thought you were the one, but it was just sort of nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Maybe you're gay. Mm. <laughs> I think I'd know if I was gay. Then let me try it again. You want to kiss me again? Yes. Then give me my five dollars back. <laughs> 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 Hands it over. And another five. <laughs> Seriously? You need to make it worth my while. <laughs> Tommy pulls out his wallet, hands over five dollars. <laughs> Beth pockets it. Then they kiss again. Beth pulls away. I know you felt that. It's very disappointing. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. She never said she didn't like kissing. Who? I need to figure stuff out. One more try. We're done, Tommy. Well, we still have two minutes. <laughs> I waived the two minutes. No! <laughs> I'm happy you're going to be a doctor. That's really cool, but you need to stop smiling at me. Do you have change for 20? <laughs> Go. <laughs> stop smiling at me. Tommy hesitates, then walks off back into his house. Beth watches him, sighs, walks off. Blackout. Scene 5. An open area. Liz and Sister Betty drag slash carry in the unconscious Elizabeth. Do you see your time portal? Maybe on the other side of the boat house. Yeah. Elizabeth yeah. stirs. Pincher again. Stop nerve pinching me! <laughs> Elizabeth wriggles free. She scrambles to her feet. Ugh. Gets ready to bolt. If you run, I'll sink your time portal in the lake. You wouldn't. I and mean, then you'll be stuck here, at least until you finally disappear, when she rejects your life. Oh, and marries Carl, Carl Flunt? Yes. Why do you think that would make me disappear? Because that's not what you want. I wonder what that will look like. And you would just go, poof. Poof. Elizabeth stares at her. Points. Look! Flowers! Oh, they're <laughs> pretty! <laughs> <laughs> Sister Betty disappears off stage. She's so annoying. <laughs> Are you going to get in your time portal, or do I need to shove you in? I just, I just realized how funny it is that you think it matters at all what you do here. She's going to marry Carl Flint. No, she isn't. But even if she does marry Carl Flint, even if she's rich and happy, do you, do you think that's you? That's nowhere near you, or the nun. But look at me. I can be a socialite. The woman. Behind the man? For me, that's not a big swerve for you. That is, that is not you. That's the point. Is it? You are so desperate to change your past and give yourself a different life, but you don't see you in that life at all. This mess you're in right now? No, no, you'll just, you'll vanish. Gone. Forever. You came all the way back here to make yourself pointless. I don't know what I was worried about. Better life, bet, the better Beth's life turns out, the more that's me. What happened to you to make you such a terrible person? I am not a terrible person here! Look at you! I mean, since you were Beth's age, how many incredible, drop-dead, super, wonderfully happy moments have you had? What? Yeah. Yeah, don't count them. Count them. On a scale of 1 to 10, how many 10s have you had? Liz starts counting in her head. She doesn't use her fingers. Sister Betty comes in behind Elizabeth, holding a daisy. She watches. I mean, I can guess right now. It's going to be zero. You have not had 17 incredibly drop-dead, super wonderfully happy moments. You're right. Ha! Thought of another one. 18. You've not had 18. Sure I have. Then why are you here? If your life is so happy, 18 incredible, drop-dead, super wonderfully happy moments in, what, 10 years? Why are you here messing with your life? It's not enough. You're right. That's not even two a year. It's not. I'm not gonna ask how many you've had. Thousands. Tens of thousands. I am not listening to you. You <laughs> are so smart, but when I, you were a teenager, were you visited by any of us? No. I was, but not like this me, just by you and the nun. And I made the choices that turned Beth into me. Leave it alone. So then why are you back? If it didn't matter, why are you back? Because. It was close. I almost went to see Carl. Could have gone either way. I didn't go see him. I never went to see him. 
But I needed to come back and make sure that no one messed it up, messed with me. Because your life is so great. I won! Right? She picked me! Just leave it alone! Sister Betty sneaks up behind her and nerve pinches this <laughs> and stops her from falling. She's so much more annoying than you. Sister Betty lays her down, frowns. But why did all this nerve pinching is a sin? I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> Maybe she's right. Maybe it doesn't matter. If Beth never becomes me, there's no me. And she'll never become nerve pinching you. But we're here. She pinches Liz's arm. Ow! You feel pretty real. Maybe it's all real. Maybe our lives are like a tree, and there are all these branches, and all these futures, all these possibilities, and it's all real. Somehow. Maybe we can't go poof, because we're real. And maybe it's not about going backwards, it's about going forwards. Maybe that's why cars only have headlights on the front. <laughs> <laughs> You're making my head hurt. And so maybe I need to not worry about singing. When did you become a nun? Relative to right now. In about seven years. Well, okay then. This is your pre-nun period. Nothing you do now counts. I don't think it works like that. What happens in the past stays in the past. Nobody says that. Do they? I think you have an opportunity here. Think about it. I'm going to take her to the future, but I will be back. Liz drags off Elizabeth. Sister Betty watches her go. Maybe if I had a son. She looks down at the daisy. Okay, could work. Should I be a good girl? She plucks off a petal. Or a bad girl? Another petal. She keeps going. Good girl. Bad girl. Good girl. Bad girl. Good girl. Bad girl. Good girl. Bad girl. Good girl. There's only one petal left. Bad girl. <laughs> she butts the last pedal. <coughs> Liz walks back in. Okay, I took her back to the future. And I may have come back in her time machine and dumped it in the lake. It's safer for everyone. <coughs> I've decided I'm going to be bad. A little bad. <laughs> A tiny bit bad. Okay. What do we do? We get back to marry Carl Flint. You just can't make Carl Flint happen. If the beach doesn't work, there are 50 other romantic places I'm way too familiar with. Come on, we'll wait for her back at the park. They head off. I don't know any romantic places. Good. And they go. <laughs> Scene six. The beach. The faint sound of waves, maybe seagulls. Carl stands there, alone, just looking out at the audience. Beth comes in, pulls herself together, walks up to him. Carl? Carl looks at her. Uh, I'm back. <coughs> Hi. Thanks for waiting. I'm sorry I'm late. I've seen you at school. Yes. An awkward silence. It stretches. <laughs> well, this is awkward. I'm not really a talker. I get that. I'm trying. Uh, first thing on your mind, what's that? Are those ladies your aunts? Or it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not sure why they wanted us to come to the beach. I mean, it's nice and everything, looking out at the waves rolling in, but it's not much of a date. Is this a date? What did they tell you? I'm not sure. <laughs> Awkward silence. They watch the waves. They wanted me to ask you to tell a story about your uh, grandfather, uh, Papa, some, some Papa Dan. Sure. And a bear. I don't think I'm going to tell you that story. That's a story you tell to friends. Oh. We're not friends. I hardly know you. I hardly know you. Silence. A little too long. You can go if you want. What? I know you're only here because, well, I don't know why you're here, um, but you, you tried. So I free you from whatever obligation you think you have. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Beth turns to go, takes a step, and turns back. No. No? No, I'm not giving up this easily. I don't know what this is. Maybe it's nothing, but I'm not going to take the easy way out anymore. Not today. You're not? Feels like it's been working for me so far. Sort of. But let me ask you something. Do you want to be here? I... I do. Why? I don't know why. Uh, you seem interesting. Do I? You do. Then you need to talk to me. I'm just bad at it. Sometimes at dinner with my family, no one will say a word. But with the entire meal, just eating. I mean, I guess that's good because sometimes when people talk when they eat, you can see the food. That, that's that's gross. Um, <laughs> but I wish sometimes my parents would ask me like what I'm thinking. I guess the problem is I used to tell them and they had no idea what I was talking about. So we just went back to eating. What did you tell them? Uh, science stuff. Ah. So. <laughs> but you did a good job there, talking. Uh, say something else. I think I'm empty. Come on. <laughs> I used up all my conversation. I don't believe you. Carl thinks. Shakes his head. Uh, I got nothing. You talk for a while. <laughs> That's not how conversations work. Conversations go back and forth like the waves. There's a rhythm. Uh, waves are actually sort of random. Uh, they'll come in, you know, you think it's steady, then boom! A bigger wave. <laughs> Conversations too, I guess. Maybe. And this is what we'll do. See that little girl over there, running in and out of the water, having fun? That points out toward the audience. She is that girl, boys. Whenever she's in the water, I'll talk. But whenever she runs out of the water, you talk. That's random. Ready? Uh, okay. She's in the water. Staying in the water. So I'm going to talk about the future. What would you do if you had some idea of what would happen in the future? What would you... Oh, she's running out. Go. Uh, can the future be changed? The points. Oh, uh, she's still in the water. Uh, she's still out of the water. Uh, I mean, if the future can't be changed, who wants to know what's going to happen? Uh, I mean, talk about a spoiler alert. <laughs> I want to live my life in the moment. But if the future can be changed and something bad is going to happen that can be avoided, then yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, she's in the water. Go. I, I always thought things would happen on their own. I never thought I had to find my life. I thought my life would just find me. But now I don't know. I mean, I want to write. I think I want to write. I get in these moods where I take a notebook and I just start writing and the stories just fly out of me. I don't know where they come from. Maybe there's another me in another universe who's a really great writer and sometimes her stories just leak over. Though I always thought that was silly, the idea that there are different versions of you. Now I think maybe there are. And that we do need to figure out which of those selves we need to be and get the courage to try and grab that future as hard as we can. So I've been thinking about a few possible futures, all the choices. And now I'm rambling and why won't that little girl get out of the water? Hey, little girl, get out of the water! <laughs> uh, she's running. You, you scared her. She's, she's laughing. She is. <laughs> She's sitting on the sand. Your turn. Uh, I think it's important to think about <laughs> what you want to be and face that future. I like to invent things. And someday I'm going to invent something amazing. But so far all I've invented is like stupid things. <laughs> but if you told me five years ago that the next ten things I invented would be dumb, I'd invent them anyway. <laughs> uh, because every time I fail, I learn something. And... Someday I'll meet a girl that can be excited about that for me. Yeah, you know, the good stuff and the stuff that sucks, but which we can learn from. And I'll be excited for her as long as she's chasing her passion. As long as she's trying to be the happiest her she can be. I'll support that. Uh, th that makes me happy. That's sweet. On the other side of the stage, Michelle comes up. She stands there, looking out of the water, paying no apparent attention to her. I had my first kiss today. You did? Tommy Andrews. Ah. You know him? Uh, of him. Yeah. He a good kisser? Not really. Huh? <laughs> Apparently I am, though. Wow. You do, right? I mean, that's sort of encouraging. Maybe there are things you can be good at and not even know until you find them. Maybe kissing is just the tip of the iceberg for me. Maybe I am good at other things. 
I want to find them all. How about you? Sure. Beth looks at it. So, my Papa Dan was out hiking in the woods one day. I don't know why. I guess he liked the woods. He never took a gun. He didn't want to kill anything. He just wanted to see things. Be out there. So, one day, he's walking. And out steps a bear. Just standing there, looking at my grandfather. And Papa Dan doesn't want to run. Because some bears can run 30 miles per hour. Yes. <laughs> and Papa Dan cannot run 30 miles per hour. <laughs> so very slowly, he reaches into his pocket, and he pulls out a jelly donut. Papa Dan loves jelly donuts. He tore that donut in half as the bear stared at him, and Papa Dan ate half of that jelly donut. And then he tossed the bear the other half. Underhand, softly, just like this. And the bear caught it, and the bear ate it. And the bear made a happy little noise, and the bear walked away. And from that day on, my grandfather carried a jelly donut with him everywhere he went, even to church. Because, and he told me, there were very few problems that a jelly donut could not get you out of. Uh, so did uh, you, you bring a jelly donut? <laughs> no, I wish. I could use a jelly donut right now. Beth notices Michelle, who looks over at them. Michelle then looks out at the water. Mm. Be careful, Gracie. Don't go out too far. She's adorable. She's at that age where she needs to do everything alone. But I think she knows I'm watching, just in case. Michelle moves closer, eyes still on where Gracie would be. <coughs> I thought I'd give her a treat and bring her here. Where we're from, the water isn't this nice, this clean. Plus, this is where my parents met for the first time. That's sweet. I mean, they knew each other, well, sort of. They went to the same school, but they never talked. Not until the day they came here. She thought he was weird. But this was the day, the big day in their lives when crazy things happened. The day that put them both on the path to their lives where they would, that would lead them from then on. My mother still talks about that day. Beth just stares at her. You know what I mean? What are your parents' names? Waldo and Geraldine. <laughs> <laughs> Beth laughs. That's a relief. For a moment, I thought. What? Nothing. Actually, my mother's name isn't Geraldine. It's not. It's Liza. Beth stares at her. Turns to Carl. Can you get me something from the snack bar? Is everything okay? The jelly donut would be amazing, but I'd settle for a Coke. Okay. Carl looks at Michelle and leaves. What is your father's name? What do you think? It's not Waldo. No. Tell me. My father's name is Carl Wirt. <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy for me, too. I'm your mother. You will be. Can you prove it? I don't have a scar on my foot, if that's what you mean. And you've told me that story a hundred times, all about your crazy future selves. Where are they? Are, are they here? They're around somewhere, unless their futures have collapsed. I have no idea how that worked. Maybe ask Carl. Except he has no idea time travel is his name. Yeah. You never do tell him. Why? Yeah, you didn't want him to freak out. So I married Carl. You do. And we have kids. Well, you have at least one. Me. I'm really not allowed to tell you anymore. Uh, am I happy? Michelle hesitates. Not, I never became a writer. You're a great writer. Books? Amazing books. Wow. Then what's the matter? Uh, it's dad. What? I'm not supposed to tell you. You have to tell me. Shh. Mm -hmm. We could get into trouble. Tell me like you're telling me a story. Okay. Okay, this, this might have happened two days ago in my time, more than 30 years from now. There's a couple and they go to see a movie together called Touching Blue. And afterward, they were crossing a road to get to the car. 
and this truck ran a red light and the man pushed the woman to safety. But he, he was hit. He was killed. Oh, no. So, so maybe that's why I came back because I was hoping to, you know, somehow. So if that couple never did see that movie. Touching blue. I guess that would solve the problem. Michelle comes back hard, crying. Thank you. You love him. He's my daddy. And he's happy. He's rich and successful. Well, we were never rich. What? But, yeah, I mean, we did okay. We were never hungry. But you told me that story about your future self wanting to marry him because he was going to be rich. I guess something changed when you married him. Maybe he was with you when he could have been in the lab inventing whatever made him a ton of money. But it doesn't matter because I can tell you this for all of my life until my father died, you were both happy, like so happy. And that's my granddaughter? Oh, she is. That's amazing. And she loves her grandma. They both stare at offstage Gracie as Carl walks in with a soda. The eyes Beth and Michelle trying to figure out their strange chemistry. Beth finally notices it. They didn't have any uh, jelly donuts. Hey, sorry. This is Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. I'm Beth. This is Carl. Very happy to meet you. Carl shakes Michelle's hand. I always like the name Michelle. Maybe you'll name your kid that someday. Maybe we will. Carl gives her a surprised look. <laughs> Beth smiles at him. Michelle's eyes track Gracie. Oh, there she goes. Uh, never a dull moment. Take care now. Michelle runs off stage. Beth watches. Penny for your thoughts? Just thinking about all the futures out there. How real they are, whether they're the ones we actually experience or not. She looks at Carl, then walks up to him, kisses him. They separate. You are a good kisser. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bad yourself. No. You have potential. She smiles. Black out. Scene seven. The park. Liz and Sister Betty sit on the bench. Sister Betty and mid -ramble. And you know what I do then? Oh, I can't wait to hear. <laughs> I take my finger and I poke it in the ground. Poke, poke, poke. I just jam it in there. <laughs> you put your finger in the ground. A row of holes a few inches apart. And then I plant the seeds, drop one into each hole. And that's a garden. It's a miracle! <laughs> How are you, me? Sometimes I suck on the finger after. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> it tastes like life! Did you ever stick your finger in a jelly donut and then put your finger in your mouth? Of course. It's just like that, but with dirt. <laughs> dirt is God's jelly. <laughs> Having no sex makes us weird. Death enters. <laughs> I can't believe you're still here. Sister Betty was telling me about her garden full of flowers and vegetables. So many cucumbers. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I plant dies. Sometimes it just takes practice. So, I'm not sure what you've been up to, but we've been kissing. Lots of kissing. Okay, that's embarrassing. How come you didn't tell me we were good kissers? We are? You're not supposed to be kissing anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I just met our daughter. What? That's wonderful. I mean, not our daughter, really, since you two don't have kids. You don't, right? Heck no. But she was old, like older than you. She had a daughter, a pretty little girl. And... It's because I married Carl Flunt. Yes! <laughs> well, what if I don't marry Carl? Marry Carl? You should see his mansion. No, in our future there's no mansion. What? <laughs> can't forget it. I can't forget it. Apparently I'm happy with Carl. 
who is sweet, but totally not who I ever saw myself married to. But he dies because he saves me from a truck. But I'm going to save him if I actually marry him. But what if I don't? There's so much responsibility. Uh, I mean, in your future, did he seem happy married to what's her face? Marianne Flugel? Was he happy with Marianne Flugel? I don't know. They're rich. Why wouldn't they be happy? Do they have kids? No, I don't think so. So if I let Carl marry Marianne, there's no Michelle, no Gracie? Maybe that future is always real. Somewhere. We are still here. And just the fact that I'm talking to the nun version of me who has never existed in the same version of any of my futures means that anything is possible. So don't sweat it. Just be happy. Do you want to date Carl? I guess I have to. Well, you don't have to do anything. Strip all that away. Think about what you want. What's going to make you happy and do that. There are a zillion possible versions of your future. A million different kinds of kids you can have. A million different cute grandkids. But don't obsess about trying to make it perfect. Just try and look for happiness. Stick your finger in the dirt. <laughs> right here. No, here we go. You do it too. Do it. They each press their index finger into the stage as if it's going into the earth. Now smell it. <laughs> smell the dirt. This is life. This is experience. This is love. Now suck on your finger. I'm not <laughs> going to suck on my finger. <laughs> suck on your finger! Sister Betty pops her finger into her mouth. Beth follows suit. Liz sighs and puts her finger into her mouth. They pull their fingers out. Now, go and live your life, Beth. Make good choices, but make your choices. Go. Are you two going to be okay? What's going to happen? Well, I suppose I should get this time machine back to Sister Bertha. Satan never sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> Beth looks at Liz. Are you okay? You're never going to be rich. Anything's possible. Tell me what you're going to do. I'm going to keep seeing Carl Flint, but I think I'll keep my options open, too. Try to figure out what I want, what's going to make me happy. I'll definitely take the list into consideration. You better take the list into consideration. Mm -hmm. Still, I am not going to smoke or drink. Well, you can have a little fun. Sometimes we do the hokey pokey at the convent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not that much fun. <laughs> I'm going to try to find a life in which 27-year-old me is truly happy, along with 37-year-old me, 47-year-old me, all of them. And I'm going to write. I'm going to be a writer. Good for you. And I'm not going to see Touching Blue in a theater, no matter what future I'm in. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the real question is, what are you going to do? Me? Clearly, you're not going to go poof, either of you. You're going to take the time machine back to your lives. You, I'm not worried about. It's time to plant the marigolds tomorrow. <laughs> but you need to find yourself a life. One that's going to make you happy. In my future? <laughs> that's not happening. Make it happen. You have your whole life in front of you. On a branch of our future, I'm never going to see, but it's yours. And compared to going poof, anything you do is going to be amazing. But you need to embrace that. And it's not going to come from me. You need to look forward, not back. Yes! Headlights, remember? <laughs> Something must make you happy. I've been playing the guitar. What? Are we good at that? I don't know. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> does that make you happy? It does. In fact, it's three of my 18 happiest moments since I was your age. <laughs> Chase that hard. And if you don't, maybe your future self will come back and give you a kick in the butt. That sounds horrible. It wasn't too bad. They smile at each other. A little awkward. Well, I have to go meet Carl. We're having dinner, and he's going to tell me about his microwave thing. We'll see how that goes, but... <laughs> Thanks. Both of you. Beth impulsively hugs Liz. Sister Betty joins them. <laughs> go! Be happy! For us! For you! Okay. Beth exits. Liz and Sister Betty watch her go. And look at each other. So I guess this is it. Oh, I'm in no rush. It's time travel. It's not like I'm going to be late. <laughs> Let's get into trouble. 
Like? Sometimes I find myself thinking about bikers. Sister <laughs> Betty! <laughs> I don't know what they say. What happens in the past stays in the past. That's just something I made up. I'm still good advice. Do bikers hang out in bars? Many of them do. <laughs> they no, start heading off. No hard liquor, though. Maybe iced tea. How about a Long Island iced tea? Oh, that sounds fancy! <laughs> <laughs> and I've still never been kissed. Or grabbed a butt. Do bikers have nice butts? They do! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on, you want to make some bad choices? I can definitely help with that. They head off stage. Still only lasagna. <laughs> and they're gone. End of play. <laughs>